Today is Friday, August 10th, and here's our buoy tent update. So today we plan on going out into the ocean, and we headed out across and started right off the North Jetty in about 45 feet of water, and started trolling our way with the tide, with the current, and with the wind. Now it seemed like a cell came in right about 7.30, 8 o'clock, because it got windy, and it got worse. It got really, really nasty out there and a lot of boats started to come back in. Our first pass through, we hooked five, kicked the coho back, kept another one, and then we decided to try and make one more lap through there before we made a decision if we want to stay out there and battle it. I mean, it was the swell wasn't bad, but the wind waves were just brutal. Everybody was getting soaked, myself included. Rain gear did not matter. It was just dripping down through everything. We were all pretty wet, and it was all from wind spray. It was, it was pretty nasty and windy out there. On our second lap through, Nah, nothing, not even a bite. So we heard that there was fish being caught up north. We heard there were fish being caught at CR buoy. Yeah, in that type of wind, no thanks. I don't wanna have to buck it all the way back if we ran north. I don't wanna have to chew it up while I'm trying to go all the way out to CR and then have to come back through it again. No, thank you, no fun. So we decided to go ahead and come on back inside into the river. And we came back into the river and started around checkerboard, fish sawdust pile bounced around a little bit and didn't really see much, maybe two or three nets. And then we uh, decided to go up to the washing side and try and hide from the wind a little bit if we could. Now we saw maybe eight, 10 fish total caught today in the river, so that's good. We saw a handful of fish caught. When we came into the river, we had just the one coho. Uh, we ended up with three fish today, two chinook and that one coho, and we let uh, another chinook go. We let a, a hatchery tule go back into the, the river. It was paper bag brown, eh, not a good quality fish whatsoever. So we kicked that one back into the system. Um, all in all, I, it was good to see a handful of nets come up. It's not a great bite yet, but hopefully with these bigger ties we see a few more fish. But we ended our day on something that I've probably never seen before. We were doing this troll on about 15-20 feet of water and the rod starts, middle rod on the starboard side starts loading up, loading up. And I'm telling the client, hey, wait, wait, let him eat it. Let him eat it. Okay, yep, yep, he's got it. All right, go ahead and hit him. So he picks it up, sets the hook, and bendo, bent all the way down to the real seat. It was nuts. I'm thinking, uh, do we snag a sturgeon? I don't think there's crab pots up here by the bridge. What's going on? So uh, all of a sudden, it started peeling line. Well, it's a fish. There's no way it's a schnook. It, unless it's an 80 pounder, right? So uh, we reel up on the lines, I turn on the big motor, we start gunning it in reverse, trying to run down this, this fish, and we come up on it, and it's a harbor seal. Now, harbor seals, I can get a fish back from. We chase them around a little bit, they eventually get tired of dealing with it, they just drop the fish and swim off. Sea lions, eh, not the best chance of getting a fish back. Harbor seal, no problem, I can get that fish back. So we're chasing them around, going marlin fishing, water's flying over the transom, it's coming up over the back as I get the boat in reverse, and we're chasing him down, get right on top of him, and he comes up, and he has one of the hooks right in the corner of his mouth. Now, I highly doubt that that harbor seal came up and ate that anchovy and ended up with that hook in the corner of his mouth, but I don't know, it, it was very strange. I've never seen that happen before, uh, the only thing that would make sense is if a fish was coming up to eat the bait, as soon as it hit it, the harbor seal came over and hit him and got the the other hook in, in into the corner of his mouth. But I'll tell you what, hooks come out of a salmon really well when they're barbless. Not the case with harbor seals. We followed him around, tried to jiggle it loose. We could not get that barbless hook out of that harbor seal to save our lives. Man, I felt so bad for that little guy. But if you guys see a harbor seal run around with a green machine flasher trailing behind him that was us <laughs> so hopefully he can shake that hook out himself and uh, get that cleared off but we had to end up just cutting the line just because we couldn't get close enough to him to uh, try and get the pliers and get him undone but all in all it was a decent day considering the weather made it really difficult to fish it was almost impossible to get the trolls down that we wanted to and so we had to basically adapt like we've talked about before and so, you know, some of the stuff that where we got bit, I wouldn't have done before, but hey, it worked today. So it's something that I could use in my arsenal later on in the season. That is our update for today. I got to repair that reel, get some new line on it after that harbor seal. And uh, I think he popped my little transducer up in the back when he was going around underneath the boat. So I got a little bit of work to do. On that note, we'll see you guys tomorrow. 
and I'll probably be in the river because it sounds like it's supposed to get big out on the ocean the next couple days. Today might have been my last day out there in the salt considering that closes on Sunday. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Tomorrow.